Okay, I seen this one on the interwebs, and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it, right? Boom. You know what I'm saying? How Ryan Garcia lost everything. Lost his entire career in one moment. It's not gonna lie. I don't think... I think that's a little exaggerated. In one night, actually. That's a little exaggerated. I'm gonna lie. I feel like it's a little exaggerated. But again, I, the Ryan Garcia stuff, it, it, it's, it's been in the back of my mind. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, man, that man be talking about real real interesting stuff sometimes, bro. Like, but I need to sit down and talk to this guy, you know, like, like have a conversation with him. You know what I'm saying? I need, I need, hey, I need to know type shit. Just 45 days before his fight against Devin Haney, the entire internet believed Ryan Garcia was in need of a psychiatric evaluation, possibly an admission to rehab, or at least restricted access to social media because his erratic behavior was sending him into an all-out downward spiral. He was, under no circumstances, capable of fighting the undefeated 31-0 champion. And then, he absolutely demolished his opponent, becoming victorious in a fight that he was destined to lose. He even bet two million dollars on himself to win, a wager that earned him 12 million dollars. Ryan trolled his opponent, the world, and everyone went from calling him crazy to a genius. But Ryan was a ticking time bomb. He has an ego the size of Mount Rushmore, a clear alcohol addiction, and an evil darkness inside of him that finally revealed itself. Okay, brother, the ominous mood? Relax with it, brother. Damn! Evil? Is that what that we're doing, Broski? What's his name? What's the shadow's name, Broski? Pat! Pat, that's what we're doing, Patrick! That's what we're doing, Patrick! during a Twitter rant that got him banned from boxing forever. However, to understand how he it got, got so from, bad, okay, we must go back to 105 days before his fight where Ryan announced boxing? that he was getting divorced from his wife, Andrea Salina. Ryan's wife, Andreas. Drea, gave birth to their second child on December 23rd, 2023, but they waited to post about it on social media until January 5th. Less than one hour after Ryan made the post, he also made a formal statement that he would be getting a divorce from the same woman who just gave birth to his son. The narrative that Ryan divorced his wife within an hour of their son being born That's crazy, that's dirty work. <laughs> Ryan said that this that's was not true and work. that he just decided to announce to the public both of these major life events at the same time. People who despised Ryan looked at this as a cowardly move and that he was a deadbeat. His fans speculated that maybe this woman cheated on him or maybe that this wasn't actually his child. But the court documents say that they split due to irreconcilable differences which doesn't really help us understand the truth. It Regardless, is, going through a, a divorce is extremely stressful, nothing. especially when there are children involved. People began noticing a transformation in Ryan. He seemed to have gained weight. His face looked bloated. His speech was slurred in interviews. He was constantly twitching and moving around. Wrong, Just bro. look at the before and after I, differences in I his speech, there, clarity, and body language. I think that's the most important thing in my life. That's the thing that keeps me as uh, productive and efficient as I could possibly be and calm. Because when I'm not fighting, you know, I don't know where to put all this energy. I have so much energy. I have I so much fight. thoughts. Yeah, I do so got much, energy. You know, passion for everything I, I do. I try to get hit in the face. If I don't have a fight, you know, I'm like, what do I do? I'm just being honest. I mean, it was really the people, like, influencing me. Like, damn, that hurt. I didn't really care. At the, if I'm going deep down in my heart, like, I don't really care. Like, bro, don't show up. I don't care. Don't people voice and, like, because, like, bro, if you, look, if you listen to me speak as a... Five year old, yeah, like I mean, as a even if you listen to me speak as a twenty year old to like now, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna try it. Like, I would am, but yeah, yeah, you can do the math and figure it out. Type shit. I sound different, you know what I'm saying, Brusky? I sound different, so like, <sighs> I feel like it's a year, right? A year one five. Fight. Yeah, two years, man. Like, you know, a lot right. can happen in two years, bro. I don't really care. At the, if I'm right. going deep down in my heart, like I don't really care, like, bro. Don't show up. I don't care. In an interview with Ariel Hawani, fans suspected he may have been on substances. You feel confident that you can hang, you know, he's not typically a ground fighter, but obviously- Perfect. Wow. Do you have beef with him? 
No, I mean, he'd been calling me out for a while. You know, okay. He called me out first. Ariel trying to have a discussion with a high teenager. Coke, weed, and ego is a hell of a combo for well, this that's kid. Just and at first, internet, this definitely seemed like a stretch. These were probably just some of his haters trying to spread rumors. But less than a week later, his cryptic social media posts raised real concerns. On March 3rd, 2024, a video posted to Ryan's Twitter seemingly reported his death. The caption read, March 3rd, Sunday, 2024, we slit RG throat and threw threw him in a basket, nobody will find him. Video is exactly 666 in time, we told you we were coming. The violent message is followed by a series of randomly pressed letters that closes with the sentence, Satan is sitting at the top now, 666. The same video was posted on Instagram with the caption, this is why you don't mess with us at the top with even more gibberish. Also note that the satanic demon Baphomet is mentioned in the caption. While some people immediately thought he was just trolling to sell the fight, his ex-wife posted a message stating that she was concerned for him. He may seem fine, but he is not. I know in my heart he is being heavily oppressed. This is not a troll. I'm genuinely concerned, and so is all his family members. We are not a part of any of this, and we want him to get better, but this is real. Pray for him. Ryan tried to clear the air the next day with this video, but it left people even more confused. I personally wanted just to send out a video to the people that love me and my fans, um, family that's concerned that I'm okay. I'm not dead. I believe in Jesus. All those are lies. And, you know, I... So was your account hacked or something? Or, was, like, what happened? You can just... Was his account hacked? Was this... Is this jail they're blocking my cards i can't access my money nobody's hitting me back i don't know what's going on but uh just know I'm okay. Who well, are that's they? suspicious. Who tried to put him in jail? That's Who suspicious. is controlling his money? Two days later, Ryan Garcia took to Twitter to claim that he was kidnapped by the higher up elites and forced to watch the most horrific crime known to man. Hey, bro. All right, talk to us. Bro, I don't give a f bro. They held me down and they made me watch little kids get raped. I don't give a f anymore. I'm not f joking, bro. I have proof. Andrew Tate? You know the higher elites, bro. You already know who they are, bro. You have proof of this on your phone? Yes, of course I do. The f you talking Why is about? Dylan Dillon doing this? You could get a f***ing video from the Bohemian Grove. Of course I could. Ryan sounds distraught. He's slurring his words. His fans are even more concerned than ever. He doubled down in a series of alarming tweets. I won't read all of them, but some of the more cryptic ones read, Before I go, I want to release everything. Does no one care about the children? Shame on y'all for staying quiet you know who you are. He also mentioned Bohemian Grove a few different times. The Bohemian Grove is a 2700 acre private campground in Monte Rio, California. It is Monte home to an extremely Rio. exclusive gentleman's club that hosts a two week retreat every July where some of the most powerful men in the world attend. During Wait, where is the real? Shit, I, I don't really be in a loop like that because I, I none of my business type shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you know, none of my business, but, but this is real? That ass? Ain't that suspicious? If it, well, if this is real, isn't that a little suspicious? Rio, California. It is home to an extremely exclusive gentleman's club that hosts a two-week retreat every July where some of the most powerful men in the world attend. During That's the first weekend suspicious. of the summer encampment, robed figures sacrifice an effigy as part of a ritual meant to banish all worries from the gathered members. Yes, they make a sacrifice every year during the retreat. See, some things I'll be like, now why ain't the FBI looking into this? You know what I'm saying, Roski? They look into some, some other stuff that it really ain't none of their business, but things that sacrifice? What you mean? What, you, what do you mean, sacrifice? What do you, what, what's, what's being sacrifice? What do you, what, what's it? What? 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 I got questions, nigga. I got questions. But they but also, I don't got, I don't want the answer. You know what I'm saying? Like, questions, some questions shouldn't be answered. You know what I'm saying, Roski? This is. Like other people can find the answers. Ascertain that it is not a real living being sacrifice every year during the retreat, but they ascertain that it is not a real living being. The Grove has been the center of many conspiracies for decades, claiming that human lives are sacrificed here, children are trafficked here. Okay. Remind me never to go down that rabbit hole on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Cause my brain started to it started to rapid fire, you know what I'm saying? Uh, remind me never to type in Brahman Grove into YouTube search and and go behind that conspiracy theory, bro. Because that, that one seemed deep. <laughs> go this one seemed like it runs deep. What the fuck? What did he just say? 
conspiracies for decades, claiming that human lives are sacrificed here, children are trafficked doing? here, and the powerful elites have dark secrets that are hidden here. Oh, we do know that no. the Manhattan Project planning meeting took place here in September 1942, which oh, led to the creation hell. and the ultimate firing of the atomic bomb. However, you can too, which led to know that the Manhattan Project planning meeting took place here in September 1942, which led to the creation and the ultimate firing of the atomic bomb. What? However, you can also find hundreds of posts from people who worked at Bohemian Grove that say it's nothing more than a summer camp for rich boomers who just get drunk for two weeks straight. They do admit that a that weird energy permeates throughout the camp, and the members have a strange love for urinating on the trees, but nobody claims to have seen anything worth sharing with Alex Jones. Either way, it's rare to see a celebrity as famous as Ryan speak about such conspiracies, and we have seen other celebs speak out about similar powerful figures in the industry only to be blacklisted from the industry or labeled as crazy. But the follow-up post that Ryan made after his Twitter rant did not ease conspiracy theorists' minds. Now, over these past couple of days, you guys have seen some pretty intense things. I understand what they are and I understand what they look like. But I'm coming back to announce I'm not going to speak on any other topic other than boxing, sports, and my fight. And that's, that's the team doing that? I'm going to be talking Chad, about. Ryan speaking or is team speaking? sedated and reading off a script in a very robotic manner. Or theories took place in the comments about him being silenced by the elites. Or that this isn't actually him and he was replaced by a clone. Or this is some <laughs> sort of humiliation <laughs> ritual. His opponent, Devin Haney, says otherwise. He it's tweeted, this is all an act, y'all. The fight is happening on April 20th. He's just playing crazy to like sell it, which is bro, weird because there are people out there who are actually crazy, but he's just acting for attention. There is no doubt that Ryan's antics developed mass interest in this fight. It's not like Ryan and Devin had this long-standing real-life beef, which is usually the main reason why any fight gets a ton of hype, because when you watch their face-offs and trash talk moments, they seem more like two people just having a mild disagreement. I don't know how you won that. Bro, it's three. I beat the f out Yo, you. What do you mean? Not, bro. I gave you an eight count. You did not give me an eight count. You don't remember that fight in, in uh, Reno? You, no, you beat me, though. I'll give you that. So how did I get a point taken away and I won? Because you won. You beat me all three rounds. Duh. You can still win. Think you about it. No, but I got a point Think about it. It seemed like every day Ryan was an entirely different person. And even though the conspiracy theories and obscure tweets slowed down, his mental health and potential substance use was still in question. I've been feeling a lot of hurt because I tried myself. I tried my hardest to share all the, the love that he gave me. And I tried to help out the kids. And I tried my best and everybody tried to break me down. Man, that's all you can do. Just try your best, mate. Just try your best. Ugh. Poor, sad, happy, mad. I'm the same mother. I'm the same dude that shows you I got big balls. All you have in this life is your balls and your word. And I hang that sh everybody straight up. <laughs> Wait, you think you good? Wait, what? Think of what? She, I like how. <laughs> Yo, Bobby's just like, uh, I know I'm like supposed to be acting uncomfortable, but like I'm actually uncomfortable now. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I know like this is my character, but like, I just dead ass. What did he say? Same dude that shows you I got big balls. All you have in this life is your balls That's and your word. word. And I hang that sh everybody straight up. At the end of the day, I'm like, what is he no talking to about? Big friend. No, no, this is a big friend. <laughs> When I was on the Katy Trail, literally, I was on the. Oh, I'm drunk. Yeah, like, bumble glass. On the Katy Trail. <laughs> and I told her, Do you support pedophiles? Wait, what? She okay, okay. Says, we got, bro, you can't go from like funny to serious to funny, guys. You're messing up, like, stop. Friend, this is a Make me look like I'm laughing at shit. That's when not funny. I was on the Katy Trail, literally, I was on the. Oh, I'm drunk? Say less. I was at, on the Katy Trail, and I told the women, Do you support pedophiles? She looked me in the eyes and says, absolutely, with a thumbs up. That is crazy. And yes, and yes, I'm running for president. I'm not even kidding. This one, hey, I'm going to take a toast to all the haters. Empty, drank it all myself. But despite what the internet had to say, Ryan was confident that he would win this fight. He had so much confidence that he did not seem to take his opponent seriously. You might hear me singing one of my songs between the rounds and just like, <laughs> you want to hear one of my songs? I can just make a new one. NGQ, doing what I do. All right, looking nice. Okay, come through. And I, 
<laughs> he even showed up to the weigh-ins drinking a beer. Ryan made a deal with Haney's team beforehand that he would pay them $500,000 for every pound overweight he was, which ended up being a bad move because Ryan weighed in at 143 pounds, meaning he owed them $1.5 million, but he honored his deal and paid them the seven figures. If a boxer comes in overweight, they can technically disqualify him, but Devin Haney insisted that he did not care and the fight should go on. And at any point did you consider not taking the fight considering he missed weight by over three? Of course not. It don't matter what way he, can, what, what, what way he came in. I'm a true champion and I will show it. It was now just a couple of days before Eight. the bout and the boxing world was convinced that Ryan was crashing out and this would be one of the most devastatingly one-sided fights in history. It's also important to understand that Devin Haney was undefeated, so it seemed like a no-brainer that he would walk away with the W. I mean, that's for sure what the odds makers thought. The odds for Devin Haney to win were overwhelmingly favoring him, somewhere as high as minus 900 minus 800, but the average seemed to be around minus 600, which means that you would have to bet $600 to make 100. The odds for Ryan to win were placed at plus 550, meaning your bet would be multiplied by five and a half if Ryan won. And a lot of people lost a lot of money that night because even it. though the score indicates Ryan won by split decision, <laughs> he Robbing me a bag ain't gonna lie, yo. Robbing me a bag, you know what I'm saying? W running shots, he's ain't gonna lie. He dominated Haney in the ring, knocking him down three times, even though it should have been six. Because three Haney times. managed to hang on to Ryan's waist for dear life. Ryan looked as sharp as ever. He was not playing games. He was not dancing around or hugging. He was there for a brawl, and he came out victorious. Against all odds, against all insanity allegations and potential alcohol abuse, Ryan gave Devin Haney his first loss. And within 72 hours of the fight being over, he sat down with Patrick Bet David and told the world that this was a master plan to convince everyone he was crazy so they doubted him. I mean, my, my cameraman Chance, Ajay's there. Um, hey, we have it pre-recorded months ago. What did I say it was going to happen? I said, I'm about to make sure everybody thinks I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Why? Wow, it's going to be the call the great escape. Like, I have it all documented. I was already planning it, uh, you know, weeks and weeks and months behind. And I was not going to budge for nobody. I didn't matter if I went on his podcast, anybody's podcast. I was acting like sporadic. I just, like crazy. I would go on Your man like, space, you were just like spaces. Like, you were just <laughs> my nose, like, I non, saw never, like, It's just a tip. I had everything like I just like but then you make adjustments to what was real though is um at times I did drink a little bit during camp because uh, I like to drink. Ryan claims that basically all of his pre-fight antics were a lie besides the and drinking does which does explain his face being so bloated but he did tell Jake Paul on a FaceTime call that the beer he drank at the weigh-ins was fake. Yo do you have an extra beer? No, I could get you one. All right. You said it was what? It was uh, apple juice and sparkling water. Oh sh**. What are you? What Yo, do you, if nobody needs more, nobody needs help, like, giving antics. To, like, why are you helping Jake Paul, bro? Like, please, bro. He's not the right guy to be telling this stuff to, I swear. He's gonna take this and then, like, times 10 it, bro. Yeah, I thought it was real. And although faking multiple manic episodes is definitely a twisted way to get attention, he did double down on his advocacy for crimes against children. There's actually really people in the front lines of all this you know i'm in contact with them um his name is jaco I'm, I'm not gonna say his last name but basically he's a big advocate he goes to the congress all the time to speak about child trafficking and he could confirm all these things the kids did you actually have videos of kids things that i actually done? do i do have videos you yeah. have videos. yes we have videos who have seen them who have you shown them to uh the guy Jacob, he has a, we're gonna go to Congress with it. But the most shocking story that came from this was that Ryan wagered a $2 million bet on himself to win, which yes, is legal. Boxing is the only sport that allows athletes to bet on themselves. However, they cannot bet on themselves to lose, obviously. Since Ryan's odds were at plus 550, that would mean his payout would be somewhere around 10 to $12 million. There, yeah, there's I mean, a story of you bet $2 million on yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Is, that, get, is that a true I, yeah, story? Story. I and you made 12 million bucks? I made 12 million dollars. Sick. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was cool, too. But basically, yeah. Uh, um, I didn't even start boxing. the word to pl place that bet. I just felt like really disrespectful. I've been myself Vegas. And in my head, I said, this is going to be the biggest Las Vegas ever had in a minute. Because uh, they're like, 
I just felt like it was disrespectful. Now, we don't have any proof that Ryan made this bet. He is the same guy who lied about literally everything leading up to this fight. So at this point, it's kind of hard to believe anything he says. But the entire internet did a 180 overnight. No more calling him crazy. Now, they were calling him a genius. genius. But just before Ryan could walk away, the genius victor who played the world and got filthy rich, breaking news hit just days after the fight that Ryan tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs. ESPN reported, Starbucks Boxer Ryan Garcia tested positive for the performance enhancing substance Osterine the day before and the Osterine. day of his upset win over Devin Haney last month. Now there is a due process that people need to respect when it comes to a fighter testing positive. They have an additional B sample test to essentially double check the results. These trials take at least a few weeks, sometimes even months, to 100% certify that someone is guilty of doping. However, the very next doping. day after the news broke, Devin Haney went on ESPN to a essentially declare Ryan as a cheater. You know, during the buildup, we've seen a lot of interesting things from him. You know, we've seen his character. Uh, we've seen the guy cheat. We, 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 we see the type of person that he is. Ryan immediately proclaimed his innocence. These dudes are weirdos, bro. They're trying to take a young Christian man down. I would never, ever take steroids in my life. And we already know that. I don't cheat, bro. This is God-given. God-given. I'm a Mexican strongest. What? And when you see what was actually found in his system, you will realize there's an extremely low chance that Ryan was intentionally using these PEDs to gain an advantage. Osterine is a research chemical, not an FDA-approved drug. It is supposed to enhance lean muscle growth and strength. Victor Conte, who is an extremely controversial sports nutrition expert banned from every sport besides boxing, tweeted, Fake news is being spewed about the New York State Athletic Commission's chart of allowable limits for PEDs. Osterine has a 0.1 nanograms per milliliter allowable limit, and Ryan Garcia had 6 nanograms per milliliter reported for 419, which is 60 times over the limit. Although 60 times over sounds like an insane stat, we are talking about micrograms, minuscule amounts of the drug. According to Word? Osterine's clinical trials, 3 milligrams is where the test shows to act. Let me get study. Let me get my um, get my notes up. Drug. According to Osterine's clinical trials, three milligrams is where the test shows to actually have an impact on performance. In general, what we see when we dig into the literature is that Osterine at a dose of about three milligrams is kind of where you start to get into the territory of increases in power, something that could be chalked up to useful in sport. Okay. Anything below that, you're not really getting, especially as a male, highly unlikely to be getting anything worth taking it to begin with. If you're an athlete with even a room temperature IQ coach on your side would hopefully tell you, this is not the compound you wanna be using. Like there is no sane, not completely idiotic person who would ever suggest using Osterine for P as a PED in boxing. Okay, so boom, did Ryan he wasn't doing this on purpose type shit. Okay, hold on, hold on, let me educate me then. a amount in his system, but when you consider that he tested positive the day before and the day of the fight, that would not be enough time for the drug to actually improve his performance. He Word? would have to have been taking much larger doses weeks in advance. This puts into question that Ryan may have taken the drug by accident, which could be possible. Perhaps he took a supplement that he thought was 100% legal, but it wasn't. He brought up numerous times that he took ashwagandha, which is an evergreen shrub that contains chemicals that might help calm the brain and reduce stress, which he thought might have something to do with the positive test. However, his main reason as to why he is being falsely accused actually makes a lot of sense. What Victor all? Conte is connected to Snack. Snack is who sponsors Devin Haney. He was known to be a chemist and a biohacker that helped a bunch of bass players cheat. He got banned from baseball. Stick with me here for a second because I got to give a little background. Victor Conte is the founder of the Balco Lab, a it business that supplied anabolic steroids to professional athletes and Olympians in the 80s and 90s. Conte developed, with the help of a chemist, his own steroid that was undetectable in athlete testing. After 14 years of doping the biggest athletes in the world, including Barry Bonds, Marion Jones, Jason Giambi, Shane Mosley, just to name a few, Conte was tried and found guilty in 2003 for conspiring He's a to destroy. He's illegal. He I, I mean, okay, if, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like how I didn't say any words there, and then at the end of it, I said, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like I do that a lot, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I do that a lot. <laughs> Whoa, so he found a legal way, he he worked around the system, you know? You can't really be mad at that, can you? 
You know what I'm saying? See, some guys like this is why the, sometimes like the rules change. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like things are the way they are because of people like these guys. You know what I'm saying? They figure out how to just maneuver their way. You know what I'm saying? Like that one. Like what's that one guy? That um, that scammer that he did all the phone calls, broski. What's his name? They made a movie about him. What's his name? Oh, that rules change because of that guy. You feel me, man? Rules change because of that guy, bro. He scammed hell of people off out the money. You know what I'm saying, man? Performance enhancing drugs That's to more crazy. than 30 baseball, football, and track and field stars. After ah, serving just four months field. in prison, he proclaims his innocence to this day. So from 84 all the way until 2000, Damn. everything that Balco and Snack did was completely legal, completely clean. At the time! Athletes were ever given any sort of performance enhancing drug. Victor rode the paper thin line of what is illegal and what I is simply see. a deep understanding and manipulation of the rules his whole career. I know that the anti-doping rules that are in place are so easy for the athletes to beat. It's like taking candy from a baby. Did I feel that I was doing something different than other athletes and coaches and trainers had done for throughout the entire history of the Olympic sport? The answer is no. I mean, the, the whole history of the Olympic Games is just full of corruption, cover-up, performance-enhancing drug use. It's not what the world thinks it is. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. It's Despite a fraud. Victor's crimes, he got right back into the world of sports nutrition after being released from prison. But this time around, he was claiming to be an anti-doping advocate. He started a new company that is basically the same as Balco called Snack, which is his supplement company that they say has been pioneering the expansion of human potential by utilizing clinical science to drive athletic performance. Snack is a sponsor of Devin Haney, who works one-on-one -on -one with Victor Conte. Additionally, Victor has associations with with VADA, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association. VADA is the company that performed the drug test on Ryan. Now, Victor is not the owner nor founder of VADA, and they claim he has no association with the company, but he is very much an outspoken advocate for them. And I became an, an outspoken anti-doping advocate in 2005, so I refer my fighters to VADA. That's the extent, you know, of my relationship. Did I introduce Margaret Goodman and Flip Hamonsky that, that run VADA, two people like Dick Pound, who was the founding chairman of WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, and others that, that helped them Yoni. be able to do the testing at WADA accredited labs. Yes, I made some introductions, but nothing more than that. So is it suspicious that the guy who literally created steroids that don't show up on drug tests, works directly with Ryan's opponent, and is a huge advocate with ties to the company that is doing the drug test on Ryan? Well, that's up for you to decide. Ryan Garcia has been served a one-year ban until April 20th, 2025. For His the, victory was for removed for what? him and ruled as a no contest. Therefore, Dead Devin Haney technically retains his undefeated record. Ryan also had to forfeit his prize earnings of $1.2 million. Luckily, he bet on himself. Unless the Vegas pit bosses are trying to track him down and get their refund as well. At the end of the day, it is Ryan's responsibility to know exactly what goes into his body. He knows how serious drug testing is in this sport, and if the legal limit for a drug is zero, then anything over that is cheating. End of story. Even if it was an accident or a setup. Having specific drugs in your system on the day of the fight is against the rules and considered cheating. However, I do <laughs> brav, find Brav, 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 brav. You're yapping the next, the next level right now. I ain't gonna lie. Let me tink, get out of my thoughts, man, because me and Bob are real pissed right now. Word? Bro, you know what I, you know what I think happened, man? Man was like, Man was like, oh my God, I can't believe he beat me. We gotta figure out how he must have cheated. Oh, bro, I got you. I got you. We can, we, we can, we got this. We got this. Come here, come here, come here. We're gonna issue a drug test, okay? And then we're gonna make make this motherfucker lose everything. We're gonna make this motherfucker lose everything. That's actually that's mad crazy. What the fuck? It's odd that Victor Conte said this. Let's for just a moment talk about Devin Haney, my guy, yeah. and how horrible this is for him that he has to deal with this stuff. And and until we get a reasonable explanation. From what do you Ryan, mean? The burden of proof is on him to prove there was no intent to cheat. Because otherwise, I don't care if somebody snuck into your room and spiked your toothpaste, you're going to be responsible. It seemed very specific that he mentioned someone sneaking drugs into their opponent's toothpaste as a setup. I mean, I didn't even know that was possible, so... 
kind of sounds like someone who is speaking from experience. Now with Ryan feeling like he was set up, combined with his excessive alcohol consumption, his life began crashing down. His mother was diagnosed with cancer and he tweeted, if my mom dies, I'm going with her. One week later, he was arrested in Los Angeles for felony vandalism after a Beverly Hills hotel accused him of causing an estimated $15,000 in damage. Then the next week, he went viral again. Here come the down spiral. We know what people love to see a hero. Let's see your fall, crumble, die trying. Blah, 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 blah for his drunken antics at a poker game alongside other celebrities like Jimmy Butler, Ninja, and Dan Blazarian. Cheers. Is he gonna chug that whole thing? All right, all right. Only a cabron would be insane. <laughs> Jimmy Butler. I like how Jimmy Butler's unfazed. He's just, ayo. It was great. I love Jesus, and I'm feeling great. Are those pants just falling off? Even yeah, if he wanted to give them? Ryan the benefit of the doubt and see his perspective, he would send out some ridiculous tweet or go on a drunken rant that made you realize no 25 year old should be acting like this. And on July 4th, 2024, he would officially cross the line. Ryan joined a Twitter space in a drunken stupor and in less than six minutes managed to finally do irreversible damage. Niggas are sending niggas to the ER and y'all was worried about other people saying the ER, the hard R, when niggas are saying niggas to the ER. The, the fact that you're whoa, whoa, Ryan, it's a little too much dip on your chip there, brother man. You know what I'm saying? A little too much dip on your chip there. Whoa, what? Damn, a little too much dip on your chip there, brother man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to put the why? Everybody want to. Everybody want to act pro black. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to act pro black. Okay. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Okay. With the with the black black and black crime, whatever. You know what I'm saying, broski? That's that's a huge. That's a huge thing, my guy. Here's what you think, bro. If you're not black, you will never understand what it's like to be a black person. You understand? You will never understand what it's like to walk through America as a black person. Okay. So you can't. You you can't. It's like it's like it's like. Me, like take like walk, t take my shoe, walk in my walk in my walk in my shoes. You know what I'm saying, bro? Damn, this is, that video got serious quick, didn't it, huh? Damn, I was not, I did not see this coming at all. Ain't gonna lie, like this is side, this it. I'm blind, my mom not talking about getting blindsided. Boom, on God, on God, boom, boom. Now, now I gotta get serious. You know what I'm saying? Boom, now I gotta get serious, bro. For real. So it's like it, I, it cause it, like it, with it, with this N word thing, bro. Like honestly, bro, I might just I'm about I'm, so, I'm about to start deleting it from my whole vocabulary on gap, bro. Cause it's, it's getting me so tight, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then and then if anybody says it, broski, I'm gonna say I don't use it on gap on gap. And if you use it, broski, it's a it's a it's a disrespect to me and my whole people and on gap. And, and I, we we got to set it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, broski? But I I do use it but on on I do use it. So I'm not even gonna like so like. When I'm the month, I don't like with the at least with the A, you know what I'm saying? With the ER is disrespect, you're getting you're getting, you're getting slapped up. I don't care. You're getting slapped up, I don't care. You know what I'm saying, Broski? But you cannot speak on the issues of a black person because you 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 can't like you literally it's just you you can't, my guy. You you don't know. You don't know, my guy. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like, my guy. So shut sh your Shonis, your muff is moving a lot like a rat. Just yapa 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 yapa. Okay? You know what I'm saying, Broski? So I am for from now. I'm, I'm making a vow to myself to be become a, become a better person. You know what I'm saying? I will stop using the N word because I feel like it's disrespectful to not only me but to every all any any black person before me. You know what I'm saying? Especially my ancestors, bro. The A, the E R, or any other sort of that count. You know what I'm saying? And if you're around me, black, white, Hispanic, you you use the N word. You got, I'm at, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to get slapped up, tight shit. That's just the way I'm moving, bro. That's the way I'm moving from now on. And I just made that vow to myself right now. You're speaking on black on black crime, which really not speak about enough. Like, come know, on, man. Because that is a real thing, right? Hey, guess what? I bet y'all hate me. George Floyd. That Floyd, nigga bro. was a crackhead, bro. He died because he had fentanyl in his system. Hey, 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 let's go bring George Floyd back to life and kill that again. <laughs> uh, Relax. Hey, hey, nurse. Okay, now what? Damn. Well, you want to talk about what's going on in the world? You don't even know. No, shut the fuck up. Israel you're not really like that, bro. You're you don't even version. know. Um, you want to yeah. be a Muslim because Muslims support you. You weird, bro. You're like a gay ass fag, bro. Bro, 
you and Muslims as little kids, bro. I understand. I, I understand he's going through shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's no excuse. That's no excuse. You know what I'm saying? It seemed like he just lost everything. I, I, that's, that's a, here comes the down roll spiral. You feel me, man? Yo, you can fall down, get back up, but you don't gotta go all the way to fucking hell. You know what I'm saying? The climb is just way longer, brother. You don't gotta go to freaking hell, bro. You could just fall in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Dust yourself off, man. You ain't have to. You ain't have to keep digging. Bro's looking for gold. There's no gold, man. All you mother, bro. All you Muslim ass, weird ass. You're gonna regret saying all of this when you Guess what? Out Guess what? I will never be touched because I'm with God. I'm with Jesus. I, I'm and he got a God complex. Oh Lord. God, I'm not. I've never been. And he got a God complex. Brian, if you want to be a representative of Christianity, this shut is not up, the way you should be representing God, bro. yourself. Shut You're up, not, bro. Shut up, bro. Not Michael B. You're I fucking hate him. Oh, I fucking hate him. Yeah. That. Ryan thought he could just go on the internet and speak without consequences, because that's exactly what he has done for the past few months. But this time, he finally said too much. And in less than 24 hours, Ryan Garcia was officially expelled by the World Boxing Council after the president tweeted, I am hereby expelling Ryan Garcia from any activity with our organization. We reject any form of discrimination. I fear for Ryan's well-being as he has declined multiple attempts for our help with mental health and substance abuse. And if you thought Ryan woke up so and had a moment of clarity after realizing he let the darkest part of his mind spill out onto the internet, you'd be wrong. And guess what? I'm not apologizing for nothing. You ain't gonna catch me apologizing for nothing. Followed by more empty apology tweets like, I take all responsibility for my words. I misunderstood. I just got a lot of trauma. I struggle with substance abuse and it's hard for me with everything going on. I actually love black people, no cap which is why I'm actually sad I offended all my black family and friends. Also to the Muslim community and all my homies that are Muslims, my bad. Nobody thought these apologies were sincere. The damage had been done. His own family was forced to make a statement denouncing everything he said. Ryan has been open about his ongoing struggle with mental health over the years and as a family we are committed to ensuring and encouraging that he receives the necessary help to navigate this very challenging time. His father is now even pleading for him to go to rehab. I would love for him to get some type of therapy when it comes to his drinking. But as long as Ryan has access to social media, he will continue to make posts that just dig a deeper hole for himself and reveal his true intentions. If he does not change his behavior, he will have thrown away his entire life's work and may never step into the ring again. Oh, yeah. That's crazy if you don't make me change my whole personality. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Yo, Ryan, bro. I pray for you, and I hope you get the help that you truly desire, that you truly need. I mean desire, but you need. My fault. I must spoke there. That you need. You know what I'm saying? I hope you get the help you really need, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't really make serious videos like this, but this video got serious quick. You know what I'm saying? This video got serious quick. I mean, like doing that, man. Like, lighthearted, you know, lighthearted stuff. You know what I'm saying? Get a little jokey, a little bit here, you know what I'm saying, broski? But for real, get some help, man, because you truly, you truly need it. You know what I'm saying? You truly need it, broski. Um, yeah. get that's it for the video, and as always, Daddy loves you. Bye.